Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 151 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I've invited a friend and colleague of mine on the show to share her eczema story. And the reason that I find her story so inspirational is because she is a reminder and her actions are a reminder of how you can take an experience in life that could be so painful and isolating and turn it into something where you can give back and help other people, people who are suffering, who may be caught up in very similar situations that you once found yourself. And that, to me, is something that's very powerful, right? To find greater meaning in this life experience that we call eczema or psoriasis or rosacea or whatever skin condition you may have. The journey that my friend's going to share today is in no way intended to bypass the negative experiences that we have and just say, oh, don't worry, it's all going to happen for a reason, it'll work out. But how you could take where you are and everything that has happened to you, all of that together, and turn it into something that really helps bring light and it becomes a gift to others and helps you in the process. That is the overarching message that I felt really resonated when I sat down and talked with my guest today. Her name is Rocky Roy, and she's a dietitian who holds a master's in dietetics and nutrition, as well as a bachelor's degree in anthropology and theater. She was an actress turned RD who has more allergies than the average person. Her theater and film career actually had to take a total back seat because of her constant eczema flare-ups that prevented her from going to auditions and booking work. After realizing that nutrition played a pivotal role in helping her manage her eczema, she embraced a changing career to devote time to helping others like herself. She's now a board-licensed, registered dietitian nutritionist and helps others manage their skin conditions, balance digestive issues, and follow their bliss. Before we dive into today's conversation, I wanted to talk about snacks really fast because the thing is, a lot of times you're out or you're not at home, and I know life is crazy right now, you're on the go, and a lot of times a snack is an easy way to get some food in if you only have a few minutes, because I know my mom's listening to this, are super busy. And one thing that I love to do, I carry in my handbag and I always have kind of stashed in my desk and all other little spots where I might find myself are some really healthy meat sticks that are from my favorite company called Paleo Valley. You guys have heard me talk about them before. I've even had their founder on the show. And I love their 100% grass-fed beef and pasture-raised turkey meat sticks because They not only taste great, but there are no carbs, there's no sugar, there's no gluten, no soy, no dairy, no GMOs, and they're completely free of preservatives. And that to me is really important because so many people in my community are really sensitive to a lot of additives and allergens and ingredients that just shouldn't be there, especially when it comes to their skin and other symptoms that they've got really messing up their health. So if you've been struggling with a lot of things and you're like, you know, I really need some help with a snack and my go-to is always protein for a snack. I invite you to give these meat sticks a try and you can actually do so and get 10% off your order today. I went back to Paleo Valley and asked them if they could help out my listeners and they gave me a really special coupon code, GEN10, so that you can get that 10% off. When you go to their website, paleovalley.com, just enter GEN10 at checkout. That's J-E-N-1-0, and that will apply the 10% discount to your entire purchase. So whether you buy the meat sticks or something else, it'll take that discount off your entire order. If you have any questions or you're not quite sure how this works, head on over to the show notes of today's post as all the details that I've discussed will be waiting for you so you can get your 10% off. 
thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you being here on the show, especially because I know that we followed one another for a long time. And I feel like what you're doing and the information that you put out there in the world to help support people, especially in the eczema community, is just so important. So it's an honor to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I've been a longtime listener of your show, so I'm honored. And I think you're doing amazing things. Well, thank you. So um, why don't you share everybody with everyone your story about, because you have eczema mm -hmm. and you have, you have other things going on as well, because it's more complicated, right? A lot of times people just say, oh, I have eczema. But when you really dig down into it, there's oftentimes other things going on as well. And the co the story is more complicated. So what is your, what's your journey with eczema been like? Yeah. So, I mean, I was diagnosed with eczema when I was six months old and I was living in New York at that time. So I have the lovely luck of having the I think they call it the allergic march where like the Holy Trinity, which is not just eczema, but I have allergic rhinitis, which I've had surgery for. Um, and I also have asthma. So I think when I was in elementary school, things were really bad for me and I was going to the allergist and I was on multiple weekly allergy shots, like four in each arm. I mean, it was crazy. And as a kid, I don't, I'm looking back now going like, wow, how did I I was like a brave little kid. I don't know. I'm like scared of needles now. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> so when I was not getting better, my allergist did say, you know, around the age of seven or nine, um, you know, you probably have to deal with your environmental allergies. And so you probably should be moving to either one of two places, Arizona or Florida. So my, my family's all on the East coast. So my family was like, okay, let's take a trip to Disney. So I was nine years old. I went with my mom, my dad, my brother, uh, down to Florida. And I kid you not. And I, I really still don't to this day understand how my eczema cleared up in a week. The weather just completely changed me. I think it was, um, it's kind of like, you know how they say your immune system is a bucket. So we removed a lot of the environmental factors that were really dampening on my immune system, my body when I was living up in the Northeast. And it finally had a chance to calm itself down. I mean, it was drastic enough an improvement to the point where I was eating everything that I'd never been able to eat. My body was just not reacting hypersensitive to anything. Um, and my, my parents were like, okay, this is going to change the course of her life. And she's so young that we should make this move. So my parents did, um, apply. So they, they work in, they, they're retired now, but they work in the federal government. So they were able to transfer jobs. It took a three year process, but I think I was, um, I just started middle school. This was right after actually nine 11, we moved from New York, um, to Florida. And I mean, I brought, like, I, I grew like a sprout. My body caught up to everyone in my grade. I, I grew like four inches. I think that in that one summer, and I put on weight and I mean, I was doing a lot better when it came to my skin and a lot of my, my food allergies. But the one thing that then was a problem that I had to deal with was my allergy symptoms, my sinuses, because there are so many trees and grasses. So I did go back on allergy shots and that seemed to help, um, through high school, but I had to get surgery. So I've been through a lot of, a lot of things that maybe just your average eczema sufferer doesn't really go through, which is just the skin. I've kind of had. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what's interesting too about you is that you became a registered dietitian and you also do a lot of advocacy for people who are struggling with eczema. Why is that so important for you to take I mean, I, you've told me you are a, a knowledge junkie. You love learning and collecting data and being able to share it. But why around the community that has or struggles with eczema, why, why are you so passionate about this? I think because most people who have eczema live in isolation and they think they're the only one who's going through this in the world. Like you'll go into a dermatologist's office and you won't see the other patients who they're seeing who probably has what you have. So you think you're just the only one there. 
and it's very isolating. And it wasn't until my early 20s, I had just graduated from undergrad that I finally got to my aller. I was with a new allergist and she was helping me to as much as she could. And then she was like, I think someone needs to really help you with your diet. Like, I just, I don't, that's not in my scope of practice. I can give you allergy shots. She even started allergy drops, which has not been, I think, passed by the FDA. There's allergy drops where you put it under the tongue. Um, but it wasn't really, I think it was going through clinical trials. She's like, I think someone needs to really help you here. And I had never heard of a registered dietitian before. And so I was like, okay. And th- this was the time when I was actually pursuing acting and I was on camera all the time and my face was just flaring up so bad. It was unrecognizable and I would have like puffy eyes. And so just for vanity reasons, I was like, okay, I'm just going to go get this thing done. And once and for all, and then I'm going to never look back and I'm going to continue my life. But it changed me. It changed the course of my career. I changed careers because I was like, I need to get this information out to people. And I like, like one of my favorite quotes is that knowledge is power, but only when it's shared. And for me, I think like, if you don't know certain things, you will be living in this kind of isolation for a really long time. So I think sharing your story is very powerful. What works for me, obviously, is not always going to work to another people, so like another person. So I'm always going to say that. Um, but at least having the options of knowing what is out there, then when you have that knowledge, you can go from there and know, okay, like these are the interventions I can do, and maybe this is going to help me. Mm-hmm. So. And- I wanted to ask you a question uh, before we had started this interview. You had talked a little bit about how eczema, you've kind of discovered that eczema and the redness of eczema shows up differently (laughs) on different skin colors, which makes total sense. But, you know, I can I can recognize in listening. I was like, okay, that makes sense. But it's also a little surprising, too, that we're now in this day and age and, and just like kind of starting to figure all of this this out. And so for anybody who's listening to this, who may not like I am. Like during the winter months, I'm pretty pale. During the summer, because I'm from my my family is from like half uh, Sicilian, I, I get pretty tan. But for somebody who is of a, a darker complexion, and that's just genetically who they are, um, maybe somebody looking at them might say, "Well, you look fine," mm-hmm. but in reality. It's not the the redness or that inflammation is showing up in a different way. Could you share a little bit about what you've discovered around that? Yeah. So, I mean, and this is also, um, this is not my words. I was actually learning about this from a dermatologist who deals with people in his clinic um, in New York with skin color and having eczema. And a lot of the medical textbooks around dermatology really focus on um, lighter skin tones, specifically of the Caucasian race. So a lot of times when other um, ethnicities do come into a dermatologist's office, the especially like, for example, I'm of Indian descent. So my skin is naturally kind of like a weedish brown color. Now, when I was younger, I was a lot lighter in the parts of my body that are lighter in my hands, my feet. So when it's red, I can definitely notice it. But the rest of my body that tans more it ends up turning like a grayish color and it looks like it's just hyperpigmentation. So it was really interesting because in the winter times when I was younger, my mom would be like, did you go out in the sun? And I'm like, no, I didn't. It's winter. Like, I don't know why I got like 50 shades darker. I, well, actually I'll say I'm like 50 shades of brown <laughs> all over <laughs> my body. And I just never understood like certain parts of my body. For example, the lower back of me, it's never exposed to the sun, but it's like the darkest part of me. And it wasn't, ever that I had a raised rash, but it was always dark. And I was like, well, this is weird. It's just pigmented like that. Maybe. Okay, fine. Um, and, and even my face would always have like a dark, not a dark cast, but like a grayish cast. I didn't have bright glowy skin. And then when my inflammation starts to clear, I noticed like my skin has like a glow, like orange undertone to it. Finally, it just brightens up. Um, And I never would think anything of it, just thinking like maybe I just wasn't out in the sun. And then when I heard this dermatologist speak um, in his lecture, he was like, no, this 
this is common. And a lot of dermatologists mistake this hyperpigmentation in people who are of color. And you can even be of like Asian descent too. And it might not be red. It might just be a darkish color, gray undertone. And they think it's pigmentation and they'll just give them like a skin lightening cream, but it's really eczema. And sometimes, or if they think it's eczema, they might say it's mild, but really for the skin to turn that dark, it's probably moderate to severe. So they're not even getting the proper treatment. Wow. And that's, that I think is a really important point to be made. Like no one has ever said that on the show. So thank you for sharing that. Cause I hope that that's also going to help people who are listening to this and going, Oh, <laughs> that makes complete and total sense to me. Cause that's my experience too. And, um, and the other thing I also wanted, and I hope you're, you're open to sharing is I know that you have a lot of like, you're trying to figure out a lot of different things with your own health, you know, like, and, and you've got like a lot of itchy, right. Is it itchy issues or what's going on for you that like, you're looking in kind of almost like, is it histamine? Is it this? Is it that? Like, you've kind of got a little bit more of a complex picture. You've mentioned some of it before, but where are you right now and trying to like piece together your own thing? Cause you're, you are still, living with eczema. You're thriving with eczema. I mean, I'm sure you would love for it to not be there, but where are you right now with everything? For me, I mean, the itching has subsided a lot. Um, I do suspect, and I, and I've gotten stool testing and, um, done, uh, functional stool testing. And so I do have gut issues going on. That's something that I'm working on correcting, but it like with anything really, it's really slow. So I've been able to incorporate a lot more things into my diet, but I've had a history of IBS. So for me, um, it'll be a lot of fermentable types of foods and grains that will start to make me itchy. And I do notice it with the histamines. Now, one thing that I do think has helped me and not go crazy going like, what is it is, um, I do journal a lot. It's just a mindful tool that I think everyone could probably incorporate instead of going, well, I don't know what triggered this because a lot of times it might take three days for something to manifest and see your symptoms. So I have a journal, um, and I, and I write how I feel and like what I ate or like what products I use. Cause it's not, you know, just food. It's, you know, it'll be what's touching my skin or the environment that day. Um, what the pollen count is. Cause you know, I'm affected by that too. And I write all that down. And, and then I have these, the score and I made this up on my own and I call it like an R ride score. It stands for redness, rash, itchiness, dryness, and edema, edema meaning swelling. So if I don't have any symptoms present, I give it a zero. If it's mild, I give it a one. If it's moderate, I give it a two. If it's severe, I give it a three. And I score each, each category that day to see what my score is like a top score is a 15. That means like, it's really, my eczema is not managed at all. So I can see where my days are good and where my days are bad. I try to keep my number under four and I definitely don't want there to be any swelling. If I have a, even a one in the edema category, I I take that as a bad thing. Your skin should not be swollen with pus. That's like, that might be infection or something like that. If there's a number for dryness, I mean, I'm okay with that. Like if it's mild dryness, just because eczema naturally you have the transepidermal water loss all the time um, is just common characteristic. So I'm okay with that. But I, I see the trends. I can see the trends on like what I did that day, what I was eating. Um, but I am more sensitive to things like supplements. And so I'm, I have to be very careful in how I introduce things for myself. So Right now, it's not really so much the itching. Um, a lot of times, it'll just be little spots of rashes for my hands right now because I do work in a clinical setting. I, I work in nursing homes and long-term care as a clinical dietitian, and then I work at the Department of Health, and I work um, in immune nutrition with HIV patients. So I have to go in. Um, right now, actually, they're not letting me in because of COVID-19 to my nursing homes, but Whenever I wash my hands, I really notice the difference in my, and it's just like, if it starts in my hands, it will spread to the rest of my body. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly just trying to wear gloves and not washing my hands whenever possible. Yeah. And through this journey, um, do you feel like, I mean, there's probably been moments where you've been really unhappy and really miserable in your skin and being like, why me? 
Why did this happen to me? Make it stop, please. But have there been silver linings where you are like, you know what, maybe there have there are blessings in the things that happen to us that are not so ideal. So in your journey, do you feel like there's any silver linings that you've been able to to experience or or realize um, that somebody listening who's in maybe a not so great place in that moment of like, why me? That might help them see some some brightness, a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, no, I mean, I definitely had those moments, maybe more so in my earlier in my mid 20s. Um, I do think life happens for us. It's not against us. It's always there to teach us. There's teachable moments and everything. Um, my darkest, darkest days were when actually I was in I went to India when I was 22 with my mother. Um, We were doing, um, we were trying Ayurvedic treatment because, you know, conventional was not working. And um, I won't go into the details, but it was almost a, it was a life changing experience in the, in the way that my body was just not responding well to the treatment. I, I will say it was almost a near death experience for me. Um, And if I was able to live through that moment, if anything, it just made me stronger. Um, I don't think it's this experience um, is a negative thing. I think it makes you humble. Um, You have to give yourself grace in these moments and really find out what it's teaching you. For me, it taught me that um, I am a fighter and I, and I see all the other warriors out there and they're also fighters and I'm trying not to get emotional here, <laughs> but it taught me to, I mean, I changed my career really to help others, um, in this arena. And so I, I also think it's important to not play a victim. I mean, wallow in your space, let the emotion out, mm-hmm. right. But then pick yourself up by the bootstraps and go like, I'm going to fight this. Yeah. Okay. And and, and don't, and, and recognize when you do need to seek help. Don't try to DIY everything, Google everything and do it on your own. Like realize that maybe you don't have all the answers and that's okay. That's not you giving defeat, right? There's someone else out there that might be able to have the answers for you. And you don't have to suffer through this um, all on your own. Yeah, that is so true. That is such a good point to make because it can feel really dark. Um, you know, it's funny. People will say, oh my gosh, well, you know so much. And I'm like, I'm not the smartest person in the room. I'm not. <laughs> and it's okay. I'm glad because if I hit a wall and I'm not sure what to do, I'm going to start, okay, let me get in touch with this doctor. Let me get in touch with that doctor. You know what I mean? Like we, there's a reason why we have people in the world that are at that next level. And mm-hmm. um, it's great to be able to, like we don't want to just have them to have them. They're there to utilize and to ge- seek support from. So I'm really glad that you brought that up and the idea that like no matter what type of help you need, uh, I also want to say too it's important if you're in a dark place to to get help. Um, to get help also emotionally because emotion this can be very emotionally upsetting. You know to go through very dark dark times. Um, And so it's just so cool to have you on the show. I like, you know, it's funny because for those of you who don't know, uh, Rocky was on one of our office hour calls that we hosted and it was so great because she has such good information to share about different connections with eczema and skin issues. And so it's my hope that Rocky will agree to come back and she could talk more about some things that, you know, she's got a, she has a great story and she has so much empathy and so much wisdom about things. But I would love Rocky, if you'd be willing to also share a bit more too about like the clinical side of things, you know, and looking at food and diet and some of the the really cool immunologic things. Like Rocky knows a lot (laughs) about all different types of things and she's learning and reading research and it's just really cool to listen to her talk about these things and hoping maybe, maybe she'll come back and share some of it with us sometime. Of course. I mean, like I said, I'm like, I'm not the expert here either. I'm maybe a few steps ahead. I'm maybe a few steps ahead of maybe just someone else who's still going through this. But I mean, at the same time, it, 
there are so many different connections that I've, I've made through my journey or talking through other people. What was really beautiful is I went to the first ever FDA meeting for people who have eczema. It's a, it was a patient focused, um, drug development, um, seminar. There was over 500 people there, I think virtually and in person. Wow. And what was beautiful was that they gave us all badges and it said expert on it. The doctors didn't have an expert badge. Nobody else really had an expert badge. It was the patients because they were like, you hold the knowledge more than we do. And that's what it it really is. You have, you have the knowledge, just you need to share it because that's really how I think this community is going to the next level. If we share what's not working for us, you know, it's, it's not, it's not like, like how many more lotions are going to come out really? Exactly. Like, you, don't, you don't need another lotion. You don't need to research how, how many other different variations yep. of a, a lotion needs to be made. And if anything, it's funny because they did polls in, at this meeting and the number one concern was not dry skin. It was itchiness. Interesting. Yeah. It, it's like a hundred page report and they have the information now they published it. Um, I think it's, you can go to www.morethanskindeep.com or just Google it. And they have the report. They have the full video footage in there. And, um, yeah, the, the poll was like number one was itching. That's really crazy. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to talk more about, about some of these issues again. I would love to have you come back and talk about this. Oh, my goodness. It was so good to have you on the show. And um, and for everybody who wants to check Rocky out and connect with her, she has a great Instagram account. Uh, she's got a website. What is your website? Uh, my website is littleblissnutrition.com. Awesome. And my and Instagram. Yeah, gut. Is I it just gut changed dust? it. Yeah, what is it now? It's, I just changed it. I made it more targeted. Um, so people could like, I could connect more with people in this community because Instagram, like you need the attention span of like two seconds. So you need to get them while I'm hot. They're hot. (laughs) So, uh, my Instagram is gut skin nutritionist. It's uh, a gut.skin.nutritionist. And so you can just type that in and let's connect. I'd love to meet everyone. Yes. And we'll put all of the links and all the resources that you talked about in the show notes. All right. Thanks so much, Rocky. I appreciate having you on the show. Thanks, Jen. When I started the Healthy Skin Show, it was imperative that we didn't just tell stories of people who had made it onto that other side of healing their rashes and figuring everything out because we're all somewhere along this continuum of sorting out our skin rash journey. I had had clear skin for at least a couple of years. And then all of a sudden last year, my eczema popped back up. So I look at sharing people's personal journeys as a critical piece to this, no matter where they are along that continuum, because I need for you, no matter where you are to know that someone is there with you. In fact, there's a lot of someone's who are in the same exact boat. You are not alone. And we are all ultimately on this journey together. And that's why I'm so grateful to have friends like Rocky who are willing to come on and share their stories with you. For all of the details that we've talked about today and any links or resources, you can head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 151 in order to access all that stuff in the show notes. And if you've got any questions or comments, especially for Rocky and what her journey has been like, leave your questions and comments there. That way we can keep the conversation going. And remember to share this story with anyone you know who really could use that reminder that hope is possible no matter what the circumstance is especially for people who are dealing with a lot of allergies it's very refreshing to hear from someone else who's been there too and who's going through it who really understands what your daily experience is like and last but not least please take a moment to rate and review The Healthy Skin Show. It would mean so much to me, especially because it gives someone who's searching for a new place to land, right? We're looking for podcasts to help inform us, entertain us. And in this particular instance, we're really looking to support one another, especially around these chronic skin issues. It gives them a reason to stop, take a listen, and learn. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.